So this is what's called a mudra, and it's a hand symbol meant to activate certain chakras. This one is supposed to activate and balance the sacral chakra, which um, I chose to work with today because I've just been having some lower ab abdominal pains, and I know activating that particular chakra is going to help me in my practice today, so... If you know any mudras, feel free to do those. And uh, right now, I'm just opening my hips for full lotus. This is going to be partially a day of meditation. So this whole practice is going to be focused around like yin yoga and just really restorative, slow, mainly ground-based postures. Working through a lot of soreness. A lot of deep tissue and tendon stretches and a lot of glandular optimizing poses. So things that are twisted that are going to help your organs to process and eliminate more efficiently. If you did want to go into a full lotus. Just make sure that your hips are open and that you're not feeling any pain or strain through the outer glute, um, like right beside your hip and the back uh, when you tuck your feet in and um, making sure that you're not hinged forward too much either in order to manage to get in here. Uh, it should feel very natural. That's the main thing. Like, if it doesn't feel natural, if you're having a lot of pain in, in the hips and the glute muscles, like it's hard to bring that leg all the way around and tuck it in, then really don't do it. Then focus on something like easy pose, which is one leg just rested on top of the other, crisscross applesauce, or even just seated forward fold. Um, and just kind of drape yourself over your legs and let yourself stretch out. Right now I'm using a meditation pillow. Um, you don't have to at all. It's just a little, you know, fancy thing I got for myself, so I use it. But I, it doesn't start that way at all. I've been meditating for a long time, and I've, I've just barely gotten the pillow, and I will say, like, it has no difference Either way, the main thing is just your willingness to concentrate in the moment. I just like to do some neck circles to just get everything kind of primed and a little bit warmed up. Um, if we're going to be sitting for a while and letting everything kind of settle down. I just want to make sure that like I've brought some energy kind of into the upper chakras as well so that we don't feel like sleepy or drowsy during our meditation. And also so that we can hold our meditative pose without discomfort.
good deal. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was relaxing and intentional for you. I'm just going to be rolling that shoulder out. Go ahead and join me on the left side and now the right side. Make sure we're making that full, full round the clock, um, you know, 360 degree motion so that we are getting everything we can out of our time together. So that just means doing every motion that you are doing to the fullest of your capability. Don't, don't do anything halfway. It's better if you just go slower and get a fuller range of motion. So this is kind of just a roll to boat posture. Hold it for one quick second and then roll back just to kind of fire up the abs a little bit. Nothing too strenuous. This is mainly a seated and yin posture yoga class. And now just rolling out the ankles, going inwards with the circles, full 360 degree range of motion, and then outwards, about five times each. Now I'm just sliding up on my foot in order to stretch out the front of my knee. This is a really great stretch for helping your knees to be more resilient and stronger. And rolling out the elbows one way than the other, and the wrists. Believe it or not, this really helps to, um, to alleviate your joints and calm your nervous system, believe it or not. The circular motions are really good for the nervous system anything rhythmic, and so rhythm is a circle, you connect the dots. And coming up to our up dog and breathing out, going back down, up dog, inhale, and lay down again. Make sure you engage through the glutes as well as the biceps, those are what we're mainly focusing on here, and of course the hands for a nice strong base. I like to make that wave motion through my entire back, um, you know, not really keeping my head fixed, but letting the wave motion travel all the way up my spine. And then walking out our downward dog. Letting some nice hip motions just to make sure that we've moved everything today in all directions. Adds up over time, and this is not hard work. I think, you know, if anything, it feels, it feels nice. And if this position, downward dog, is hard for you, go ahead and bend your knees and drop your chest down as much as you can. That's what's important, is to stretch through the abdominals, the obliques, and the glutes. So don't worry about those hamstrings, if your hamstrings are driving you nuts, just bend the knees. And I totally collapsed out of my downward dog. No problem, you know, inhale, up dog. Let's just keep going. It happens. I'm not, you know, I'm doing this practice because I'm actually very sore from um, my training and, you know, tired from the week. But so this is a restorative class, you know. Um, Go ahead and roll out those elbows one more time with me. I'm just taking a moment to ground in our awareness and come back to presence. Go ahead and jump back into our downward facing dog. And let's do some chaturangas if you're ready. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And 
taking a few breaths here and again with our chaturanga sliding forward and then exhale down dog again our last chaturanga exhale down our facing dog good job everybody Come on to all fours and start waving out the spine, making barrel-like rotations all the way through the tailbone, through the top of the spine. So you're scooping down with your stomach all the way through the side and then pushing up through your back and scooping down the other way. And let's just go do some cat cows real quick inhale cat exhale cow waving the spine super gracefully very nice and just kind of move around in a way that feels good on the hips and now we're going to go to our puppy pose so down to our elbows and still on our knees and then to our lower plank and then to the high plank and then just keep on going between those two one side and then the other Awesome job. Let's do like four yoga push ups. Three and four. Good job. Nope, five. And go ahead and make those hip circles again with me. This is really good for winding down at the end of the day, which it is for me, but it's also great for, for waking up. Like I would say this is a great one for the extremes of if you've gotten up nice and early or if you're trying to wind down after a pretty long day. And now just extending our arm and opposite leg in tabletop position and crunching them in towards the middle. Go ahead and make little pulses with both the arm and the leg. So that you're feeling a really good burn in the shoulder and the glute muscle. And now let's switch sides. Just make sure that you're doing full, clean, extended form, however long that takes. Just remember that you're doing great and you really owe yourself a big pat on the back for giving yourself this time of day just to feel a little bit better. And let's go ahead and meet in plank position again. And then we can take it back up to downward facing dog. Opening as much as we possibly can through the upper arms, right where they connect to the trunk. I promise your shoulders will be so incredibly happy with you for this, as long as you're not overdoing it and injuring yourself. Please don't do that. If anything hurts too much, stop. If it doesn't hurt at all, go deeper. Position now. So we're focusing on balancing on our sit bones and 
keeping our knees and arms at those nice straight angles. So your knees should be completely straight and then making about a 45 degree angle with your legs and upper body and your arms reaching about your ankles with the elbows extended full length to make that nice triangle shape that you would be able to see if I was facing um, 90 degrees sideways for you. But yeah, so we are going to extend over our legs and seated forward fold and just exhale nicely all the way over and just let go all of the tension from our hamstrings and entire back. I absolutely love this pose. I know a lot of people don't, um, but the main thing is to just take it at your own pace and don't try to make it look a certain way. Don't try to make it a fold. You know, it's called a forward fold, but like if it's just sitting for you, then, then that's your seated forward fold and that's perfect for today.